Shalom, brothers and sisters. In the Bible, all Christian followers of the true God are admonished in the book of Ephesians to keep making sure of what is acceptable to the Most High. And I'm going to actually get that scripture. It's Ephesians 5, verses 10 through 13. Ephesians 5, 15 through 13. Because who are we to say to God, we're going to worship you the way we want to. We're, we're going to we're going to come to you, but we're going to do it the way we want. OK. So let's get that scripture. Ephesians 5, 10 through 13. It says. <clears throat> Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in secret. But all things are reproved, are all things that are reproved are made manifest by light, for whatsoever doeth make make manifest is light. And so tonight, um, I'm here to go ahead and shed some some spiritual light on a very important topic, a very uh, fitting topic, a timely topic, because of course today is the 16th of December. Right around the corner is the um, holiday which is commonly known as Christmas. It's a, very, it's a very touchy subject because I know that there's a lot of Christians out there watching this right now who are accustomed to watching it, you know, or excuse me, accustomed to, to celebrating that particular holiday. And they've been grown, and they've been brought up to think that there's nothing at all wrong with this particular holiday called Christmas. Or maybe you have some questions and you want to get some answers on it. Now, I'm going to show you guys today um, why it is that certain people refer to Christmas as a pagan holiday okay and I'm gonna show you guys two ways two very important ways why this holiday is pagan in origin and in actual custom I'm gonna show you guys that okay uh, and of course I'm doing this video particularly for a, a, a special young sister out there who, um, who I care very much for who actually has some questions about this particular holiday. And, you know, of course, she never met a person like me who's, you know, telling her information such as this. Um, so, <laughs> you know who you are, this is for you. And for everybody around the world who might be Christians, uh, who have questions on these things, or maybe if you're not a Christian, you're just looking into, you know, why do these Christians not see that this is, you know, pagan? Why do they celebrate this or whatever? So, we're gonna get it, all right? So, December 25th, a common American home, you're going to find gifts around a tree, you're going to find families, you're going to find a decorated tree. Christmas Day, December 25th, okay? Now, you can look this up yourself. The vast majority of what you will call theologians, like educated people who are familiar with history and they know what's going on in the world and stuff like that, um, they agree that Christ was not born uh, December 25th. They agreed to that, that that was the case. And for further information uh, on whether or not Christ was born on that day, should have had this ready. This was the one scripture I forgot. Excuse me, y'all. But basically, the scripture is going to be Luke 2 And I'm going to show you guys right now how we can logically conclude that Christ was not born. He could not have been born in the winter. All right. Luke 2 and verse 8. Let me get that for y'all. All right. Luke 2, 8. And let's see what was going on at the time of Christ's uh, birth. What was the conditions? Like, what were people doing? You know, were people outside in gym shorts playing basketball? You know what I mean? Hey, that doesn't sound like December. Especially in the Middle East. It's freezing out there. Okay. But let's get that. 2, 8. Okay, and of course, it's dealing with the birth of Christ. And it says, um, Mary, she brought forth, or Miriam, uh, she brought forth, her, brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And it says, and there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So what that's telling you is, 
And of course, all scripture is inspired of God. So what's the reason for this being in here, you know? But basically it says that these men were shepherds. And it says that they were what? Abiding in a field. So these men were actually just out in the field. Like they were just out chilling. Like, hey, what's good? You know? And it says they were keeping watch over their flock by night. So they had a flock outdoors and these men were outdoors, you know, in, in the middle of winter. Hmm. That doesn't sound like, uh, you know, some things that people who were intelligent uh, shepherds would be doing to their sheep. It, it, it doesn't go. But that's just not my word for it. You can look it up yourself and you're going to find, like I said, you know, theologians, they know that Christ wasn't born December 25th. That that date that, that was chosen does have no significance whatsoever to the actual date of Christ's birth. It's much more likely, uh, from what I've studied, that Christ was born somewhere between March, April, and May, somewhere in that time frame, where the weather's a little bit different. Um, from my research, that's what I've studied and found out. And most theologians agree with that as, a, as a, uh, a more likely time period for his birth. And some people would say, well, you know, we don't really know exactly when he was born. Check this out. The early Christian congregation, the earliest Christian congregations, they did not recognize Christ's birth as meaning anything. There was no real significance to birthdays. Why? Because, again, birthdays was a pagan holiday. It was a pagan festival. The birthdays and the celebration of birthdays were things that pagans did. In the Bible, when you look into the scriptures, it's two incidents of, <clears throat> of birthdays being celebrated. And on both of those instances, it was death, it was carnage going on. So these weren't things that were looked at, you know, in, in favor as far as uh, the word of God is concerned. Christians didn't do it. The early Hebrews didn't celebrate it. Okay. So the time period of his birth meant nothing to the early Christians who were rooted in truth. All right. So the question then becomes, where does December 25th come from? Why are we celebrating it on December 25th? And we had to, I had to go ahead and do some research on this. You guys can look this up yourself. But the reason, in uh, simple, plain English, it is what's called the winter solace. The winter solace. I think I'm saying that right. But basically, this is coming straight off of Wikipedia. So you guys can look this up yourselves. But according to the winter solace, okay, it's a significant time uh, in the calendar year because it is a day that has the shortest amount of sun, okay? And it's always been recognized as a special day. But what was it, what was it recognized for? Uh, under the history and cultural significance of this day, it says, the event is seen as the reversal of the sun's ebbing presence in the sky. Concepts of the birth or rebirth of sun gods have been common and in cultures using winter solistic based calendar cycles the year as reborn has been celebrated with regard to life, death, rebirth deities or new beginnings such as Humaganani's uh, Reading and New Year's cleaning tradition. So you're seeing right there that the December 25th holiday uh, was already in existence prior to what you modern day you know, Christians call Christmas. And it was the celebration of rebirth or of certain gods. Now. Rome, obviously, they were the ones that instituted December 25th, meaning Christmas. When you get into the Roman tradition of December 25th, you're going to find out, like we just said, the winter solace has to do with the rebirth of sun gods. The Roman holiday, which, pre, uh, which came before Christmas on December 25th, is what's called Sol Invic Invictus. That's S-O-L. I-N-V-I-C-T-U-S. You guys, look it up. Okay? Sol Invictus, which literally means invisible sun. And it was the official sun god of the Roman Empire. Okay? And so they were actually celebrating this particular day before Christ ever came into the picture or before he was actually accepted, you know, under the main Roman uh, tradition. This day was already being used and associated with the sun god. OK, so in, 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 in reality, Christianity was being pushed into the Roman world or into the world in general. So rather than stand out like a sore thumb with unpagan practices, 
it was much more practical for those men, kings, and rulers who really didn't care about the true God of the Bible or the people.